My number five guy is Salvador Perez, who took his club to the World Series this year. The one thing you love about Perez, I mean, he threw out 33, 30% last year, hit 260, 17 bombs, and 70 RBIs, but he caught 146 games for the Kansas City Royals last year. And when you watch him play, you can see the passion that he brings to the game. He frames the ball great. He's a big man, but I think I love his leadership more than anything. And guys, getting his club to the World Series was what got him on the list for me. You know, you mentioned a couple things that I was going to throw out there. The energy stands out for him. I love the low target, but I want to throw back something in your face that you talked about. This guy is 6'3", yep. 240 pounds. How much do pitchers love having that big body back there? You love the big target, but we saw this in the postseason when he got a lot of attention. He would go down to one knee to get that low target to get there. So there is a problem with umpires being able to see around a big body like that. But when you catch 146 games and you're in the lineup every day and your club goes to the World Series, you are going to get on this list. Joel, I don't know if he can continue 146 games a year and if he can keep up that pace, but what a year he had this year. And remember, he just went on that Japan tour and caught a couple of more games <laughs> after going to seven games in the World Series and getting hurt in Game 7. And I can just tell you, as somebody who was at that World Series, boy, do his pitchers love pitching to him because they know he gives it up for them. And the Royals love it, too. He's just four years into his career, yeah. so they got Perez for a while. All right, let's move on. Number four, where's pinstripes? Well, number four is Brian McCann, and we're going to hear from Brian later on in the show. And, you know, people will laugh, Yankee fans. He didn't have a great first year in pinstripes. I agree with that. It's going to get better. But at the end of the day, he threw out 37% of would-be base stealers. That is one of the best percentages in the American League. We know that he had a big bat coming from Atlanta. The one question mark coming off a shoulder surgery would he be able to throw the ball he passed the test with flying colors 37 percent 23 home runs 75 RBIs when you start talking about catchers in the American League those numbers are right up there I know he played first base I know he DH he's not the greatest receiver and blocker of the baseball but those numbers 37 percent power 23 and 75 and guys I love the fact that we were around him the second half of the year you could see his personality start coming out the leader that he was not early in the year started to develop later on. I'm looking forward to this season coming up. Yeah, I think with Jeter gone, the first person that you look at to become a leader in the clubhouse is McCann because of all the things you said, because of the position that he plays. When I look at McCann's season, what jumps out for me is how much this guy was a caretaker of that pitching staff. I don't know if the offense suffered because he was so fixated on trying to make sure he got to know that pitching staff. That was impressive to me. You have guys from the hardball times and baseball perspectives who put in a lot of research, and they say that McCann has been the best over the past six years of pitch framing, too, of stealing strikes for his pitchers. And that's something that, of course, has become really in vogue the last few years. You know, just to piggyback on something you said, Jack, I think it's interesting that two guys who were brought up by the Braves, Brian McCann and, and Martin Prado, I think they're going to end up being the leaders of the Yankees going forward. Maybe Brett Gardner will join in that as well. But I find that interesting. I would ask Flash one question. We mentioned his high court stealing percentage. You watched him a lot last year. Was that him, or did the Yankee staff do a good job of helping him? It's a combination of both, and it's a great question because when you watched him last year, I wouldn't say, wow, this is one of the great throwers in the American League, but the numbers do not lie. 37%. He was accurate. He doesn't have the strongest throwing arm. I think Gary Tuck, the catching instructor, deserves a lot of credit with the work that he did because when I saw Brian McCann in spring training, I said he's not going to be a good thrower of the baseball, and he proved me wrong. All right, let's move on to your number three on the list, and it's a former Yankee who just got a boatload of dough from Toronto. And he deserves it. I mean, Russell Martin is number three on this list, and he is a freak athletically. And you hear me all the time say, you know what, catchers are great athletes. Well, with Russell Martin, that is a true statement. Throughout 39% last year, hit 290 with 11 home runs and 67 RBIs, but that does not tell the whole story. This guy seems to go to places like Pittsburgh, get their club into the playoffs. They might not advance very far, but he gets them to the dance. And I talk about athletically. I mean, he throws as good as anybody probably one of the best blockers of the baseball in the dirt that I had ever seen with his quickness. He's going to go up to Toronto. He's going to change that staff. He's going to change that culture. And like I said, guys, when I think of Russell Martin behind the plate, an incredible athlete who's got great strong hands. You know, you look at the numbers that he had last year. I'm not going to try and throw a negative on top of everything that you just said. I do think that the Blue Jays needed to go out and sign him, get a leader, get a guy who's going to be that influence on and off the field. 
I don't think he's matching those numbers that we just saw in any of the five years with the Blue Jays, but I do think what you said about him athletically, as a leader, doing everything back there, embracing it and loving it. This guy was with the Yankees for about a month before Brian Cashman was already making a Thurman Munson comparison. It's a pretty heady comparison. We did all that defensive stuff. 402 on base percentage. This guy was on base all the time. We know even from the Yankees when he had a low 200 batting average, he does not mind the spotlight. He had a bunch of big home runs. He did the same for Pittsburgh. I'm going to reverse the Salvador Perez question for you. We talked about a big catcher. Yep. What's the advantages of a small athletic catcher? Well, you know what? Physically, he reminds me of Pudge Rodriguez, who, you know, was so short and strong and squatty. Umpires could see the strike zone right in front of him so easily. And I talked about Russell Martin. He's got great strong hands, gets a lot of strikes called I think to your point Joel because of his physical stature not being a big bulky catcher he gets a lot of strikes called all right number two on Flash's list a guy who is known for hitting and yeah. catching as well and that's Buster Posey yeah Buster Posey is number two and obviously the offensive numbers that he has put up in San Francisco are just incredible but I was a little bit surprised guys when I did the research he threw out 30 percent of the runners last year and I don't think of him as a very good defensive catcher but 30 percent is average throwing but his game is all about hitting 311 22 home runs, 89 RBIs, and what you love about him, if you're Bruce Bochy or the Giants organization, you pencil him in the middle of your lineup. He has a right-handed bat with power, and you see him shaking hands right here. He has that personality that is unflappable, doesn't seem to get overwhelmed in the big moment, but to tell you the truth, the reason he is number two on this list, he's won three World Series already, and for me, that just tells you, you know, this guy is a winner, he is a leader of his staff, you put the offensive numbers, and then he's average defensively, that's why he's number two. Three titles in his six years. When we saw in that video, you could see that Bruce Bochy, it's almost like having a coach or a manager on the field. There's no doubt about it. I think for the best catchers, that's what the manager does feel. He feels there's an extension of he and the pitching coach on the field. You mentioned his temperament and how calm he is. There was a great story in the San Jose Mercury News where they interviewed some of the Giants pitchers about what is Posey's best attribute. And a lot of them talked about that exact thing. Hudson said that sometimes you're on the mound and it's as if the game is becoming a tornado. He said Buster Posey comes out and it's almost as if he's yawning. And Hudson <laughs> said that that relaxation, that solitude made him feel calm. And he said, don't take me wrong. He's not yawning as if he's not interested. He's just, that's the way he plays. He's placid and he gets the job done that way. During the World Series, there was a conversation who had the lower pulse, him or Bumgardner. <laughs> and then you thought, oh, they work together all the time. Flash, I would ask this question to you. How hard is it to be as good an offensive player as he is when half the time you're wearing the tools of ignorance, you're taking all the bullets that you yeah. take as a catcher? It's not easy. And, I, you know, doing the research, I think he caught 111 games last year. He played first base quite a bit. So Bruce Bochy tries to give him a little bit of a break. But even if you're catching over 100, 110 games, physically not easy to do to have a batting average over 300 with the power numbers for a guy who can't run a lick and obviously had the injuries a couple of years ago, an incredible offensive player who probably deserves a little more respect defensively. All right, let's wrap up Flashes 5 with your number one catcher, number one on a lot of people's lists, and that's Yadier Molina. Well, Molina's just a freak when you watch him out on the field and Michael Kay always talks about the eye test when you watch Molina play and you watch him throw I mean he clearly is the best thrower of the baseball in the game 48 percent last year throwing he's become such a better hitter the power numbers are down a little bit lately only seven home runs 38 RBIs last year did hit 282 but when you watch him play and Bob you talked about this before another coach or a manager out on the field I think it was very evident this year when they went to the playoffs he got hurt they were a different ball club what he does for a staff what he does shutting down a running game I mean that also extends to runners not getting secondary leads so they can't score on base hits I mean what he means to that organization and that team probably cannot be put into words in my opinion he's the best catcher in the game today just by the eye test